Hello and welcome to Formulations. Formulations is brought to you by ThoughtForm. ThoughtForm is a communications design firm located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, working hard every day to bring beautiful clarity to complex ideas. Today we'll be talking to Gwyn Creedy about consumer decisions and how to communicate clearly and help them through them. Okay. Uh, to start off, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself, Gwyn? Sure. I'm a writer and brand builder here at ThoughtForm, and um, I like helping clients, uh, you know, take complex problems and figure out a way to communicate them clearly. That's awesome. All right. It's good to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Good. Okay. Question one. At ThoughtForm, we like to distinguish between high information and low information decisions along our consumers' journeys. What's the difference between a high information and a low information decision? Well, a lot of it depends on um, the amount of time you take to research a decision, but it can also depend on how risky the decision feels to you. For example, when people buy cars, they generally are spending a ton of money and they do a lot of research. Uh, looking at you know different things, what's available now. Maybe they haven't bought a car in the last five years, so they don't know all the bells and whistles that are available, and how the prices have changed in the last five mm -hmm. years. So that's generally a high information decision, but it it doesn't always have to be. Um, and even things that you would think would be a low information decision, like saying buying pain reliever, could become a high risk decision if, for example, it's a parent buying it for their baby, you know? So suddenly it isn't just buying it for yourself where you're like, ah, I don't care what I put in myself. Um, but if you're buying it for your baby, you're like, hmm, is this okay for babies? You know, I have to read the instructions very carefully. Have there been any bad reactions? So something that's very simple can become a high risk decision, which therefore makes you do a lot of research to gain a lot of information. Um, I was talking about cars um, just recently. Uh, they're generally a, a high information gathering decision, but just in the last few weeks, we, um, our daughter needed a car mm -hmm. sort of very quickly. Like she thought she had her car working that day, but it had broken down for absolutely the last time. So um, we knew the next step was going to be her leasing a car, but we didn't know it was gonna be that day, but that was the day she went out and leased a car. So it was like, normally we might have taken several weeks to sort of review things, look at different things, but she needed a car that day. So it was like, do you want black or white? <laughs> you know, it needs to have, uh, it can't be more than this much per month. Right. And uh, it needs to have um, all wheel drive. Those were, that's what we had boiled it down to, to minimize the risk in a decision like that. So it seems like um, consumers whether they have a decision that's risky or not, or high information or not, it really depends on the consumer situation. Yes. Giving your car example. Yeah, it's very personal. Is there a way that companies can predict whether a, um, a decision will be high information or low information? Well, or should they plan communications accordingly? Yes, I think they should definitely plan communications accordingly. And you can certainly talk to your consumers or find them wherever they happen to be on the path and you know by talking to them you 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 start to get a feel for what the range of information needs are whether it's high need low need and what areas the needs are in mm. so that you can be ready with the information they need when they need it you know if you're a car manufacturer it'll help you set up your website in a way that will make it easy for people to find the price find the options, find the leasing ability, you know, or the, the leasing options. You know, you, you need to understand your customer's needs in order to know how to um, aggregate your content and respond to what they need. What are some of your favorite research and testing methods for finding out what consumers need? All right. Um, I definitely think it's very important to find out what consumers need. That is my one of my favorite research areas. Um, I think companies can really do well by being absolutely and currently on top mm. of what their consumers want. Also, what the consumers of their competitive uh, competitors' products want, and also mm. what people who should be consuming their product but aren't are thinking. 
I think there's sort of three groups there that you need to stay on top of. Now, doing that can be super expensive. I mean, I've worked on research projects that have been in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they don't have to be. I mean, everyone can do a basic level of research that that isn't very costly. For example, I could go on to Twitter right now, pick, pick a product category, and I could go on to Twitter right now and tell you what, in general, people are thinking about that category of product or service, um, what they're thinking about the key brands that are available in that category. Um, you know, it won't, it won't be the deep dive you might get if you sit down with consumers, but, you know, you spend couple hours looking through hashtags on Twitter and you'll you'll start to get what the key issues are the key complaints the favorite things of people and that's really really helpful um, another thing you can do that's not very expensive at all if you have a consumer hotline and people call in you should be regularly going through the logs of that to find out what people are because you know they're gonna call if they're angry or um, you know feel dissatisfied and sometimes they call when they're really happy too so you know you wouldn't take it as the definitive how many what percent of your consumers are unhappy versus happy but you could read the unhappy ones and find out what it is that they're unhappy about because sometimes you learn things you had no idea existed so that's another important way um, another is to go where your consumers purchase this your product or your service or where they are considering it now that might be online um, it might be in a store you know and if you can sort of watch them unobserved that's really important because sometimes when they know they're being observed they behave in ways that are different than if they're if they don't know that they're being watched sure. obviously you don't want to be too creepy about it but <laughs> um, you know <laughs> but but um, yeah being able to observe your consumers um, while they're talking about the product or considering the product is also a very, very helpful thing. What tips do you have for companies to better structure information for consumers? Well, you know, I'm, I'm big on understanding your consumer. So when you're thinking about how to present a complex idea or um, topic to to people, you should figure out what your target audience knows about that topic first and also once the topic comes up what they're concerned about um, because if you're tailoring your message to to your audience then you should try you know you need to be helpful you need to put yourself in their shoes and think about what they're going to be worried about when the when the topic comes up what, what's going to pop into their head and you know you can guess at that but it helps to talk to them first and then also talk to them again once you've sort of written or produced the way you're going to present the idea. Um, for example, I, uh, um, I, I, I purchased this numbing agent and my number one question was how long after I apply it does the numbing begin? Mm -hmm. Couldn't find that anywhere in the material. So mm. I don't know why, but it's just like, what could other than like will this kill me what could be the most important question other than other than that so companies need to think about that um, other things they can do is to um, chunk the information so think about you know ways to break down the topic into three or four big chunks so to kind of give people a way to get through it without feeling overwhelmed um, also um, using visuals whenever possible because people people find visuals more engaging and um, easier to absorb everyone knows how to like look at a picture and figure out what it yeah. means and pictures let you do things much more quickly um, than some things much more quickly than words do things like like bringing a focus to the most important things or showing relationships among ideas or showing the hierarchy of you know this happens first or this is more important that kind of thing so pictures whenever you can to use visual um, explanations in your in your presentation it can be very helpful Okay, thank you for joining us. That's about it for today. Thank you, Gwen, for um, providing us with all of those insightful answers. My pleasure. And if you're coming to us from YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe. 
And don't forget to visit thoughtform.com for lots of other content, including blog posts, white papers, case studies, um, everything you could possibly need to learn about uh, communication design. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next month.